Hey what's up everybody, it's Amaya. So today's video is going to be my cream and powder contouring routine. So this is going to be showing you guys what I do when I'm going to cream contour. I'm going to show you the products I like to use, my techniques, how to do it on yourself and how to adapt it to your face shape and your wants and needs and loves. Ugh. I'm really excited for you guys to see this video. As you can see I already finished the sissy finished product. Shameless plug, this is a fit the app. So yeah, if you guys want to see how I got this look and my tips and tricks, then just keep watching. Okie dokie, so let's get started. I already have my eye makeup done, lashes on, um, and my foundation on. So I also have like my primer, everything like that completed. All these steps, like the eyeshadow, all that sorts of stuff, is up to your personal preference. I just personally prefer to do that stuff first. When you're doing any sort of cream contouring, you have to remember that that's going to be adding another layer to your face. So you're going to have your primer, which isn't really a layer, but there is still some more substance there. Then you have your foundation, and then you're going to have your cream contour and your cream concealer, and then blush and highlighter if you decide to, which I will be showing in this video. Then you're going to have all your powder products that you put on top of that, because unless you have very, 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 very dry skin, you're going to want to put powder on top of that. Otherwise Otherwise, everything's going to get kind of oily or move around during the day. And then you have your setting spray after that. So you have to remember that that's five layers on top of your skin. And while they might not be thick layers, it's still layers. So you want to make each layer as thin as possible while still being able to see it. Because if you just add on a layer but you're not able to see it, it doesn't really make sense to add on the layer anyway. And the tools I'm going to be using today are Beauty Blender sponges. This is the uh, black beauty blender so it's like the pro one and this is the beauty blender micro mini this is just a black one that came in the set but they're normally green I think you could use any sort of sponge you want um, up until a few months ago I used the real technique sponge religiously I think that one is absolutely amazing so you do not need to use these guys I am just using these and I know you can get dupes for these little guys on Amazon that people have said are really good so okay so let's go over a few products so my three favorite contouring products for cream contouring are the Ofra skin sculpting wand this is in the shade sunset the LA girl pro conceal HD concealer and this is in the shade um, medium bisque and then the Clinique chubby in the nude foundation stick in the shade bountiful beige this one the Clinique one is an actual cream foundation stick as you can see, it's like an actual stick. And then the other two are more like liquid concealers, but they still have a creamy formula. So please ignore the smiley face on my hand. I was drawing with a pen, but I'm just gonna swatch these for you. So as you can see, the Clinique one is very pigmented and it's like a tannish orangey sort of shade. I use this one more for if I'm going to go for a more bronzy look. Next, I have the LA Girl one in medium bisque. As you can see, that's also very very pigmented um, but it's more of a cool toned sort of shade and then lastly we have the Ofra one over here as you can see that's the most cool toned out of the bunch has the most gray tone and this is the one that I use when I want the most contour chiseled look if I'm really going for that sort of look this is the one I will choose because you can see it's very cool toned so it's also really good for nose contouring and as for my favorite concealers I have the um, Maybelline Master Conceal by Face Studio Concealer. This is in the shade Light, and I'm not going to swatch these because it's not really going to necessarily matter what color they are. I really like this one because it's very nice and pigmented and also very brightening and yellow toned. Next one I have is the LA Girl Pro Conceal in the shade Natural. This one looks very orange when you put it on the skin, but it actually ends up neutralizing a lot of dark circles. And I feel like it looks very nice under the eyes. It sits very nice. It's very pigmented. I really like this guy. And then the last one is the Wet n Wild Come Correct Celebrity Concealer in the shade this one's in the shade medium gold, and this is a little bit dark for me right now. It's about what my foundation color is, so I don't really use this for brightening, but if I do use it for um, concealing. Today I am going to be using the Pro Con Ooh, I'm going to be using the Pro Conceal and also mixing it with a little bit of the NYX HD concealer. This is in the shade 02, and the only reason why I'm using this is not necessarily for a product to add any coverage or anything, but it is just to brighten this guy up a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is my concealer. So the first thing you want to do um, when you're going to do your concealer is identify what you want to conceal and where you're going to put your concealer, because you can't just start slapping stuff on there and expect it to work, you know what I mean? Although sometimes it looks like beauty gurus are doing that, they're actually looking and finding where they need the concealer and they just 
you just put it on. It might look like slapping, but it's not. Okay, so what I'm going to do is identify my face shape. I have a very rectangle, square sort of face, and my chin is very flat. As you can see, I don't have a nice, like, pointed chin. I have a very flat chin. Um, my nose, I actually happen to really like my nose, except for the fact that it has this all this extra extraness on the end of it so it tends to look a little long so I am going to want to shorten that and I will show you that later so as far as I want how I want my face to look I want to make my face look a little bit thinner and a little bit more contoured because having a very rectangular face means that everything looks kind of flat I want everything to look a little bit more defined that means I want to bring in a lot of darkness to contour that and make me look like I have more defined cheekbones so I'm not going to add on a lot of concealer the reason why is because when you add on the concealer, that's going to be highlighting. When you want to highlight something, you want to make it stick out, to stand out. I don't want my face to necessarily stand out. I want to kind of shrink it back. So I know I'm not going to be applying concealer all the way up here. Because if I apply my concealer all the way up here, that's going to make it so that my face looks wider over here, which is the exact opposite of what I want to do. If I were to apply a lot of concealer on my chin, that would really highlight my chin. I don't really want to highlight my chin that much. If I applied concealer all the way down to the tip of my nose, that would make my nose look longer. Um, and I don't necessarily want that. I want it to look like it has a nice tip, so I will be applying highlighter there, but I don't want to apply concealer. Also, I forgot to mention my forehead. I feel like I have a pretty big forehead, so I don't want to highlight that too much, so I'm not going to put a ton of concealer up in this area because that will make my forehead look wider. I'm going to apply more contour there. So to do this, all you have to do is look at your face, figure out what kind of face shape you have, and then what kind of face shape you want. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to apply it down the side of my nose, like this, I almost said center, and then I'm going to apply it just to where my winged liner slash eyeshadow slash eyebrow ends, and I'm going to apply it downward, almost to my mouth. And the amount of concealer you apply is going to be up to you. Again, everyone has their own preference on how much concealer they want to put on. You can see I'm not applying the concealer right underneath my eyes because I have a lot of lines under my eyes. I don't want to put it there because that will enhance the dryness and lines underneath my eyes. So I am just going to apply a little bit on my chin. And the reason for that is because otherwise everything will not look complete. So I am going to apply concealer down my nose just to create a straighter look, but I'm not going to apply it all the way to the tip. I'm going to stop about here. And as for the forehead, I'm just going to apply right above my brows like so. I'm also going to take a little bit of concealer and apply it right here. And this is because I really want to define my cheekbones. So if I apply concealer underneath my cheekbones, that will make my cheekbones, how many times can I say cheekbones, right? That'll make my cheekbones look more defined because you're like, oh wow, it's so much wider here. This looks so much thinner. It's like optical illusion. So anyway, I'm just going to take my sponge and blend in my concealer like so. I'm not going to bring it out here. I'm not going to try to spread this around. I'm going to kind of try to keep it right where I put it. The only thing I am going to blend down a little bit is the concealer on my lower cheek. And the reason for that is because, um, it doesn't need to necessarily stay in that straight line. It can go down a little bit farther. So now I'm just going to take some of that NYX concealer and I'm just going to do one, two, three, one, two, three, a little dot right there, a little dot, and a little dot. So as you can see, that created a much more dramatic effect underneath my eyes and with the highlighting in general. So before I looked kind of just concealed and natural, this looks much more brightened and structured. You really see this part popping out, this part popping out, the chin popping out, all that sorts of good stuff. Okay, so now we're going to move into the contour. I'm going to be taking the Ofra wand, and I like to apply it straight from the wand. So what I'm going to do is find my cheekbones first, because that's where I know I definitely want to contour. So I'm going to find that, and the good rule of thumb is to start from the tip of your ear and go down. So if you're going to look at your face, you also want to see, like, look at your face in bright lighting, even take a picture of yourself and see where the light doesn't hit, like where you have a shadow. I have a shadow right here in this area right here. So uh, that, as you can see, starts from the top of my ear and goes downward. So you're not going to want to go all the way to the corner of your mouth because we will look a little bit drag queenish. Nothing wrong with that, but typically people don't want to exactly look like that for you know, your normal makeup. Um, so I'm just going to take this from the tip of my ear. And do you see how that planed off right there? That's why I prefer using a concealer like this, because you can take it 
and draw it and then right when it stops is where you know you're going to want to stop your contour. So I don't press it on there, I just put it on there very lightly, draw until it planes off and that's how you know that's how far you want to go. If it doesn't really plane off or you can't really figure it out, go to about the corner of your eye. So again right there, it planed off, just like that. Okay, so I'm going to blend that out first because this concealer dries very fast. And to do that, I am going to be using the little guy right here. I just like using this because it's more precise. So I'm just going to blend this in just like this. As you can see, I'm blending upwards. I'm trying to keep it right where I put it, but if anything, I am blending a little bit upwards because I don't want to blend downwards. If I start to blend downwards, that's going to muddy this up down here. And remember, we created that concealer down there so that way it brightens that area up down here and creates more of a contrast. You also want to make sure you start it way back here because if you start your contour right here you're going to have this weird area of demarcation and you do not want that because this will look very unnatural. We want to make this look as natural as possible. We want to look like we're Angelina Jolie every day. Okay so as I'm looking at myself in the mirror I can already see much of a difference. I can see that area is much more defined and chiseled. So again if you wanted to add more you totally could. I like to add a tiny bit more up here because that's where I like it to be not the heaviest but that's where I like the most definition is right up there. Okay so now we're going to do some nose contouring and this is where it gets a little tricky because you have to figure out what you want for your nose. I want my nose stopping itchy right now. <laughs> That's what I want. Okay, so you're gonna look at your nose and you're gonna see there's a nice line right here. I'm like, okay, I can see that. I can see right where that shadow is hitting. So that's where I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take it from the top of my brow and go right in that shadow, just like that. And now I'm gonna put some right here on the tip of the nose. And the reason for doing that, this is gonna make the nose look a little bit shorter, not as long, which is exactly what I want. I'm gonna put some underneath the chin, right here. I'm just gonna take my lip, look where the shadow is, and just trace the shadow. That's where you're gonna to wanna to put it, because that'll make your lower lip look fuller. And I'm just gonna put a few dots on my forehead just on the outer area right here. I don't like to put too much on my forehead because it can tend to look muddy and it takes a long time to blend out but I do like to put just a little bit. I am going to go over that with more bronzer but I'm just going to do that for right now. So you may be wondering why I went all the way up to my brow and the reason is because you have a natural shadow where your nose starts right there. And if you just start your contour right here it's going to look unnatural. If you go all the way up here it's going to look a lot more natural because you're going where the actual shadow is. And blend everything out. And as far as your nose contour goes, this is where you want to take the most time blending everything because nose contours can get out of hand very, very fast. And I am going to take my big beauty blender for my forehead just because otherwise it'll take too much time. I also forgot that I like to apply a little bit in the cupid's bow right there because that creates a more defined cupid's bow and a little bit more of like a, I don't know, a fuller lip. So I like to apply it right in there. Okay, so we have the contouring aspect done. As you can see, our face looks much more put together, at least in my opinion. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of cream blush. I'm going to be taking the Maybelline New York Master Glaze by Face Studio Blush Stick in the shade Barely Pink. This is what it looks like. I'll swatch it right here. It's a nice, like, corally shimmery pink and I love it so much. I'm just going to take a little bit on my finger, warm it up, and just dab it on my cheekbones where I'd apply my blush and go up like this. I think cream blush is a really cool step that a lot of people should look into doing more honestly because it does create such a nice natural flush on your cheek and then you have to apply less regular blush which creates a more natural effect. I feel like it looks so gorgeous. If you don't like using your fingers you could definitely use a, like a dense brush, stipple brush, all that sorts of good stuff but I just feel like this works really well with my fingers. So now I'm going to take these Sephora Luminizing Drops in the shade Morning Light. I talked about these in my Best of Beauty. So I'm just going to take a little bit of these on the back of my hand, like so. And I'm just going to take my finger, my ring finger, dab a little bit in there, 
and I'm just going to dab on the cheek right where I want my highlight. And the way you're going to find where you want your highlight is you're going to turn your face and see where the light is hitting. You want to look in some direct light, like in front of a window, or again, if you have a ring light or a vanity mirror, look right there, turn your head, see where it's hitting, and that's right where you want to blend it. And I like to blend it up onto the temples just a tiny bit. I know I said I don't want to accentuate that area of my face, but I'm just blending the highlight up there. I'm not like applying it right there, so it's not going to make my face look wider. I'm just kind of blending it up in like a C shape. If you're a little bit more oily, I would maybe skip this step only because it's going to look a little shiny. Okay, so it's time to set everything with some powder. I'm going to be taking my NYC Smooth Skin Loose Face Powder for my under eyes. And all I'm going to do first is pull this down and then dab on my under eyes. You see me do this a lot and the reason for this is to get any of those creases out of there that might have been created while we were doing our contouring. I'm just going to pick a little bit up on the sponge and just dab it in this area like so and blend it out. I'm not going to bake right here. I am going to bake some other areas, just not right here. I'm also going to apply it underneath my eyes. I don't want to go where that highlight was and I'm also not going to go like all the way down. Okay, so now that we have that area set, I'm also going to set my chin and my forehead the exact same way. I'm just going to apply a little bit on my chin, a little bit on my forehead, and I'm going to blend that out again. Not baking. If I wanted to create a very contoured effect, I would take something like this banana powder and mix it with a little bit of this like peachy powder and put this right underneath my eyes like this. This is going to add a little bit more coverage as well, but it's also going to brighten up the areas where we put the concealer. Just make sure to be careful not to get it in your highlighted area. For setting my contour today, I'm going to be going in with Bad Habit, which is the Warm Fair Contour Powder from, um, Makeup Geek. If I was just going to be contouring without any cream contouring, I would use this guy right here. This is Infidelity. This is the Cool Fair. As you can see, that is a very cool toned. But because I already did some cool toned contouring, I'm going to go in with Bad Habit right there because it's a little bit warmer. It's not going to make us look as um, chiseled. Whereas if I use the really cool one right now, it might make me look a little bit muddy. I'm going to be using an e.l.f. stipple brush to do this because I don't want to add a ton of color because we already do have that nice contour there. If I add too much color, it's going to look too defined and it could get a little choppy. Because I just want to contour lightly right here now and set that contour, I'm going to use the stipple brush. This will also keep product from applying too heavily. You also notice I'm using a matte powder. I'm not using a shimmery bronzer, which you guys know I really like to do, but I'm not using that because that would create an unnatural effect. I forgot to mention that you could also contour along your chin. I do that sometimes, but I find that it doesn't end up doing that much for me personally, but if you wanted to, you definitely could. So now I'm going to contour my nose and I'm using this Cut That Crease BB5 brush. This is from um, Beauty Box 5, but any angled brush or fluffy brush that you like will do. You don't want it to be too dense or too fluffy. You want it to be a nice in-between. And I'm just going to take a little bit of that powder and lightly stipple that where I contoured my nose. As you can see, even right now, it's coming off a little pigmented, like a little bit more pigmented than we would necessarily like, but we're going to blend that out, so don't worry. And I'm also going to apply some right here under the chin. So now I'm going to take my regular beauty blender and it has a little bit of the powder left over. I didn't like put any more on there but it just has some residue and I'm just going to blend out that powder and kind of meld everything together. The blush I'm going to be using today is the Physicians Formula Shimmer Strips in the shade Malibu Strip. And the reason why I like this is because it's a nice like bronzy rose gold and I just like how it looks. I don't want a too much of a pink look. You could totally do that if you wanted to. I just don't want anything too pink. So I'm just going to apply this again right where I applied my blush and I am going to try to blend it in to the contoured area because I don't want those to look like Neapolitan ice cream, you know, two separate entities. I want them to look melded together. So for highlighter, I'm going to be using the Ofra Beverly Hills highlighter and I'm going to be taking this shade, this shade, a little bit of the bronzy shade, kind of mixing them all together, tapping that off because this is very pigmented. And I'm just going to apply that right where I put the highlighter. Again, when you're using creams, you want to remember to not go as heavy-handed with um, products as you might have gone before because otherwise you're going to look a little crazy. I'm also going to apply a little bit of that on the cupid's bow. 
and just a tiny bit on the chin, a little bit on the forehead, you know, all that sorts of good stuff. So now for the cleaning up and baking part, I'm going to take the powder from before, and I'm going to take my sponge and get it really in there, and I'm just going to go right underneath my contour like that and this is going to create a nice clean line it's going to clean up any muddiness you might have had with your contour you could definitely do this before you do blush but I like to do it after sometimes I do it before you know Then I'm going to take the tip of this and put it down the center of my nose like so and this is going to create a much more structured straight nose so if you really have issues with your nose being not straight and you want it straighter that's what you're going to want to do. So I'm just going to take my brush now and brush this off. I literally only let it sit there for the few seconds that I was talking. I don't want it to be too harsh. If you want to leave it on there for a little bit, go ahead. But I just like to leave it on there for a little bit because it does the job. And then I always take my stipple brush with no extra product on it and I just kind of blend it like that so nothing looks too harsh again. We don't want that to look too, too harsh. And then I'm just going to dust off the nose contour or nose bake, not contour, the nose bake, right like that. And now I'm just going to go in with the Ofra highlighter and just highlight the nose. I'm applying a little bit on the tip right there because I do want my nose to look more pointed upward and that will do that, but I'm not applying it like a lot there because that will make my nose look longer and that will negate all the contouring that we did, but I do want to apply a little bit. So the last thing we're going to do is finish off with a setting spray. I am not going out anywhere with this makeup on. I am just going to probably be taking it off very soon, but I'm just going to take my Mario Badescu facial spray with aloe herbs and rose water. If I was going to be going out, I would take like a mattifying spray and then spray this over it, but I'm just going to spray this. So that's it for this video, you guys. I hope you guys like it. Please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know what you thought of this sort of more informative type of video. Let me know if you liked it, if you want to see another one. Maybe I can do one all about eyeshadow and eyeshadow shapes. I think that would be pretty cool. But yeah, just let me know in the comments below, and I will see you guys in my next video. Mwah. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Amaya. So today's video is going to be the fourth video in my makeup collection and storage in-depth video. I'm gonna